Welcome to Extra Time, and we are joined by EPL and France legend Louis Saha. Louis, thank you for joining us. The World Cup is about to begin. How excited are you for the tournament? Yes, I'm very excited. Uh, there is a lot of unknown elements uh, into it. So it's, a, it's in the winter, let's say. Um, there is like no break before the team starting to play. Um, so there is a bit of uh, injuries there in that. Uh, so yeah, a few elements, but uh, I'm excited to see how uh, Qatar will host this great competition. Uh, there is a lot of uh, amazing players to watch. So I think France uh, still uh, in a, able to lift this trophy. So it will be nice. In the opening game, obviously France take on Australia. Obviously you're a little bit biased, <laughs> but do the Socceroos have a chance? Of course, of course they have a chance because Especially at the start of any competition, you will see that the the momentum is not there. The team is uh, still looking for kind of like automatism. Um, so way of playing is not totally uh, fine. Uh, we've seen it uh, with France. So they've not uh, been playing super well, and um, and that's that's the the chance of the of any World Cup. You have always a uh, Players in uh, in any side who can upset, they, they definitely uh, have a chance. Yeah. If you were Graham Arnold, the Australia coach, how would you go about this game? Like, where do you see the weaknesses in the French side that Australia can exploit? Yeah, the the obvious weakness uh, is in defence. They have conceded uh, quite a few goals. They have lost two key players in midfield. So Conte and Pogba uh, used to be those uh, very uh, loyal players able to sacrifice for the Mbappes, for the Benzema, to rip apart uh, the teams. That's not going to be uh, in place in this tournament. So there is a chance with a high pressure uh, asking kind of question from the inexperienced midfield. And then... And of course, uh, it's going to be an open game if you put uh, this team on, on the back foot. But on the same time, I think uh, when you have players like uh, Benzema, Mbappé, you have to be really careful. Those guys can hurt at any moment. So there's going to be an interesting game. That's why I'm, I'm looking for those situations. But yes, um, what are, has uh, given you a, a steep in some way, everyone has highlighted that, I think. OK, get, get, getting straight into your first prediction with that game. Obviously, you say Australia have a chance, but what score do you think it's going to end up? Uh, I think it's going to be a tight game. So uh, I, I think like the one nil, the scrappy game where I think uh, Australia will defend really hard and, and try to contain as much as they can. And uh, uh, I, I think at, at the end, uh, with the speed and uh, the agility of uh, Karim Benzema, uh, something's going to happen. That's that's my that's my view. Um, so one nil, friends. Obviously, you mentioned the the loss of Kanté and Pogba, which is a huge loss for the French side. But in general, how do you compare this team to the squad that won in Russia? Is it as strong? Or are you not as confident this time round that you could go the whole way? Personally, I'm not uh, as confident because of those two players. And I think, if I'm not wrong, Kim Pembe is not uh, involved uh, through injury again. Uh, so it's three players now. So definitely, like players with experience who, who's been there, won the World Cup, not been in, the, in this squad in midfield. You, you you don't have uh, players who has 30 caps or something like this. So um, it shows that they, they have like kind of like weak point down here. So yes, I, I think it's going to be a, a, a easy choice. I would prefer the 2018 squad than, than this one uh, with all the respect that I have. Uh, Mbappé has got more experience than he had four years ago. Uh, Karim uh, was 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 not involved. Is in it? Is a is a Ballon d'Or. So they are still good players. Igor is a very secure goalkeeper. Will help 
uh, with all this experience, uh, all these uh, young players. Looking at the rest of the group, there's Tunisia and Denmark. How do you think both France and Australia will fare against those? How do you think they'll set up? What type of different challenges do you think that both teams will come up against them? Yeah, when, when you look at the, the, the World Cup in any competition, the, 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 the aim is not to play well. The aim is to, to get through. And the, the first game is very important against France for the Socorros. Uh, if they get any points, it's, uh, it's good for the confidence. It's going to be a very tough opposition against that mark, uh, kind of a non, uh, where Tunisia um, will will perform uh, at that stage. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's going to be a very um, yeah it's a strange competition for all all the teams in this group. But Denmark, for me, I consider the biggest uh, threat for uh, for for France to finish top. Um, they definitely uh, show uh, again, like uh, not long ago, that uh, they, they they can really hurt France. But the the Socorros have their chance. You know, they can pick up points on Tunisia. They can definitely upset uh, France. Um, uh, I will think that they will find really tough against uh, Denmark. Obviously, with Denmark, the the comeback story of Christian Eriksen is quite a remarkable one. How good has it been to see him return to his best, to have him in the World Cup, but also a note on how he's been performing for your former team, Man United? It's uh, unbelievable. This story is uh, just amazing. I am so pleased for him because uh, he's a good lad and uh, have always a, a smile on his face. And uh, you can see he loves football. He loves football and uh, what he done for Manchester United and, and uh, so quick to come back to a, a certain level of uh, excellence. It's just amazing. I'm so pleased to see him on the big stage. I think it was one of his dream to do, uh, being a World Cup. I'm so pleased that uh, he can accomplish that. I, I have all the respect from the, the Danish uh, te teammates as well because they, they really helped the guy. Um, they saved uh, his life as well. So it's it's an unbelievable story. Uh, I I I can't see any any better story uh, to tell uh, to Danish uh, people. If I'm getting your group prediction, obviously I'm guessing you're going to put France on top. <laughs> Who's going to finish second in the group? Can the Socceroos shock Denmark and Tunisia? How do you think it's going to play out? Yeah, I think that's. Um, Interesting one. Uh, I see France uh, finish first or second. Uh, I do think that the upset is uh, is possible if uh, so the, the, the Socceroos start well in the competition. But uh, yes, we have seen we have seen the, the resilience of this uh, of this squad. Uh, they had a very tough qualifying uh, uh, journey. So this. Uh, I think uh, the the last game, if I'm not wrong, was against Peru, and uh, it's uh, yeah, all this is is football. It's uh, it's magic. The the kind of like spirit that you can create during qualifying uh, can can drag you into such a, a strong position when you you come about for a special competition like the World Cup. So I think they can definitely finish second. Uh, and then create the upset in, in the big two. Uh, that's the him. Otherwise, if you don't believe in that, uh, why coming? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, is, is possible. Looking at the other teams and groups at the tournament, what teams are you most excited to seeing play? And who do you think are the biggest challenges to lift the trophy at the end of December? Oh yes, you, you look at uh, you look at uh, Argentina. Um, they haven't lost in thirty games. Messi is on top form with Paris Saint Germain. I, I can't wait to see uh, Argentina play. Uh, I I have yes tipped them to be uh, definitely in the final. So I will I will hope um, that he, yeah, they can do it. There is like teams like Belgium as well. Uh, I like the, the the playmaker really well. 
but England in some way have all the chance and uh, they have a good combination of players young like Foden uh, I really like the, the, the players they, they, they put uh, some some good good uh, work in during the qualifying you've seen some strong performances so this is a, a great tournament uh, there is like definitely teams are on form so it's going to be a very open tournament. I think it will go a bit faster than in the summer, maybe, because the the still the same momentum that they were playing in the, in the championship, not maybe have heavy legs. So it will be interesting to see the intensity of the games. England obviously lost at in the Euros final and penalties to Italy. They made the semi-finals before in Russia. Do you think because of those relative successes? they're going to feel the pressure greater this time round and that might hinder them? Or do you think that previous experience is going to help see them through to the latter stages? I think those uh, performance in uh, in those tournaments really helped them. The, some of the players were young, some it was the first competition. Uh, a player like Harry Kane is like a very composed player, but he, even with age, he improved, he scored many goals. So all this, uh, I think, is um, is good for the manager. He has kind of a guarantees with his squad, which is very important. And he bring alongside some young youngsters. So you will discover some 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 good players down here. The Bellingham is one of them. I really like him for them. So all those players will be uh, very important uh, in terms of like in uh, you know like trying to. To, to guess what they're going to be the next move is going to be really hard, so which is a very big asset for the for the manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do think that they, they can really go out there and win the World Cup, but um, they all wish that. And uh, uh, I heard that a lot of uh, English people always sing that song. Uh, is coming, is coming home. Uh, he hasn't yet, so I don't know. <laughs> One of the teams that has gone slightly under the radar is Portugal. They've got a lot of talent in their team and obviously led by Cristiano Ronaldo. He has obviously had that interview this week with Piers Morgan. Do you, what do you think of those comments about Manchester United and his teammates and his current situation? And then what kind of impact do you think that could have on his World Cup preparation and Portugal's in general. Um, yes, I think that uh, when you when you look at Portugal uh, and the chance of like winning the the World Cup, they they go under the radar. It's true. Uh, still, Cristiano is one of the biggest player, biggest threat, um, biggest asset to to win games. So this interview, uh, maybe it will say the opposite. Uh, doesn't help. In terms of timing, I don't think that it's brilliant. Uh, apart from achieving that, maybe the, the the team that is under contract will decide or oh, to let him go. And that's why maybe he done this interview to actually force the, his way out. But uh, I don't think that is uh, is good timing because he has to focus on 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 his game for for the country. But uh, he always respond on the field. So I'm surprised about this interview. What is going to be a, a good outcome? And I, I don't really understand. So I, I was a bit surprised and shocked because it was unnecessary. Uh, but it is it, right to maybe uh, think this way, fine. But I think the timing is not helpful. It, 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 yes, it's not going to get a better position by saying that at the moment. So just going to the World Cup and focus and do and do the best will be the best answer. That's not what he chose. Yeah. And on that, do you think it could create some distraction for the Portugal team as well because of the attention it's it's received? Or do you think they're just going to solely focus on the task ahead? How, how do you think it could affect the wider camp? And preparation they have. I think yes, it's going to be another topic. Uh, maybe they're used to it. Uh, those those players know that uh, basically everything is around Cristiano. Uh, it's always been the case for the last ten or fifteen years. So they are maybe accustomed with that. Um, but 
it, it's not helpful. I don't think it, it is helpful. It's better to be focused on on the national team, uh, what they can achieve, or what they have to actually uh, do. And uh, but uh, if he done that, maybe he think that he need that to actually be motivated. I don't know. So it's uh, Christian always operate, uh, you know, being a, in a, in his own way. Um, so it's it's hard to know how the players will think, but I don't think it's helping. Before we let you go, we just need two final predictions from you. Firstly, who is going to be the top goal scorer in Qatar? So my prediction for the best goal scorer, um, it will be Mbappé um, because he's a. Uh, is unplayable in his days, and uh, if France find the right formation, he will score goals. And obviously, I've got to ask you who you think is going to win in Qatar. I think I know the answer you're going to give, but if you can give your prediction uh, for your tournament winners. So yes, my prediction is uh, obviously France. Yeah, because uh, they are they are the champion at the moment. They have the Ballon d'Or, who is full of uh, confidence. Uh, they have Kylian Mbappé, uh, even if they're missing the uh, two big players. Um, you you have like so many teams who can win this tournament, but France is my is my my team. Well, there you have it. France are going to win the World Cup. Uh, Louis, thank you very much for joining us and I hope you enjoy the tournament and hopefully we'll speak soon. Thank you.